Greetings. I will be making a series of videos in 2024 regarding the hypersymmetry between major earthquakes and solar eclipses. I have found an interesting direct correlation that ties solar eclipses and major earthquakes as well as volcanic eruptions. These videos will show in greater detail and clarity that should challenge what we've been told about solar eclipses, our sun and moon, as there seems to be much more going on than meets the eye. It can be best described as a dance of the sun and moon. The trickery and illusion of light and shadow. Strange things seem to be occurring in the shades of diminishing light as the moon obscures the sun's light. This transit, this occultation somehow forewarns of changes within time space and earth shape. Changes of our crustal composition in our 3D matrix. During an eclipse light is blocked, folded, warped, bent as the moon's appearance and structure seemingly shapeshifts or changes its apparent composition when making its solar crossing. Represented as totality, then, as quickly as it started, it's over in just minutes. Things are seemingly back to normal, but what's really happening during these brief minutes will be expressed within three and a half solar years, as the eclipse represents the dance of the sun and moon, and the loss of solar translation will be reflected as geophysical displacement in the years to come. This video will just focus on the 2008 Sichuan earthquake, which occurred on May 12, where 69,000 people lost their lives and registered magnitude 8. This was one of the largest interplanet earthquakes of all time, and a significant one. Now, this earthquake also had some very interesting phenomena that occurred just prior to the event, as well as hypersymmetry of solar eclipses, which forewarned this potential disaster. We're now going to focus on two solar eclipses in 2006 and 7, and how they are hypersymmetric to the earthquake in 2008. In 2006, a total solar eclipse, and 2007, a partial solar eclipse. The path of totality represented in blue in 2006 and represented in pink in 2007. We note that the exit point in 2006 is focused over Mongolia and the top end of China, while the entry point of the solar eclipse in 2007 is focused over India, stretching across the Tibetan Plateau. These are the main areas of interest for both of these solar eclipses. We're now focusing on the important 2008 solar eclipse on August 1st. August 1st is two and a half months after the Sichuan earthquake time frame, but we note that the Sichuan China I have labelled as a red star in both of these images, and we note that the path of totality of the solar eclipse works across the northern portion of Greenland, then stretching in towards Asia, and very close to the epicentre of Sichuan China, just north. Just touching upon the 2009 solar eclipses, we note that both of these eclipses in January and July also had shadows focused over China and very close to the Sichuan China we'll be looking at an animation so we don't get to see much of this in the still images but the animations we see something quite interesting. We're now looking at the July 22nd 2009 solar eclipse and we note the entry point or the entry node coming through Gujarat India and directly overhead Sichuan China a year after the earthquake notice that it's going underneath Japan Islands through the Mariana Trench and exiting or terminating around Samoa and Tonga in 2009. This in itself is another video and a very interesting solar eclipse as they all are, but we will be concentrating on Sichuan China for this video. We're now having a close look at the 2006 March 29 solar eclipse and loading up the animation we note that the eclipse begins just in the Atlantic Ocean works its way through Africa and then briefly going through Europe or the Mediterranean and then bending away in towards China and the very top portion of Mongolia and China but we note the exit nodes and looking at the different shades the red, orange, yellow we note that there are exit nodes or termination nodes that are quite important and I will explain a little bit further in this video we are focusing on the 2007 March 19 solar eclipse. Now this one is a partial solar eclipse and it is quite interesting. Now this is, being a partial, we don't get to see any red shades of the moon in this animation, but we do see an orange shade and this orange shade is quite uniform, but it briefly touches Sichuan, China and then moves quite uniform in a northward direction away. Now this is an interesting dynamic and we do get to see a lot of these with the very large earthquakes and this is a fairly good signature when combined into other solar eclipses. We're now looking at the 2008 August 1st solar eclipse and this is the most interesting of the lot. 
Now, this is occurring two and a half months after the earthquake. But we note that the moon's shadow is now moving through the top portion of Mongolia into China and then starting to elongate and stretch just north of the Sichuan China. But the interesting shadows and termination nodes are focused at different intervals and I will be plotting those in the next frame. We're now closely looking at the termination nodes of the 2006 solar eclipse and plotting these on the map. Note that the star represented in three of these images is the epicenter of the Sichuan China earthquake in 2008. We note that on the first image on the left, we note the red sliver is occurring just in Mongolia, just on the border of Mongolia and China. The very second image, the orange termination node, is occurring just into the Chinese border up north. And the following image, the third image, is the yellow termination which is occurring further south and just in towards the Chinese border. And we note that those three images are depicted as three dots in that final frame. Now adding the important 2006 data into the 2007 solar eclipse and we note again the star is the Sichuan China epicenter and we note that the orange orb or the shadow of the moon is briefly touching the Sichuan China region and note the three dots are the three termination nodes of the previous solar eclipse. Now focusing on the 2008 solar eclipse and overlaying previous two solar eclipses of 2006 and 2007 we have an unbelievable hypersymmetry as the first three exit nodes from the 2006 solar eclipse are actually the path of the 2008 solar eclipse and the exit point is occurring just north of the epicenter of Sichuan, China. This alone is quite fascinating and I find it very difficult to believe that this is just a coincidence. When two sides of a fault collide and one side slides under the other, it's called a thrust earthquake. The largest ground movement was nine meters, making the Sichuan earthquake the largest continental thrust event ever recorded. We must represent the sun as a primary time axis because without it, we do not have this 3D experience. The axis of time is constant through its rotation of both Earth and Sun, the incoming solar wind stream is the linear time upgrade. So during a solar eclipse, the Moon is blocking the incoming solar wind transfer. It's actually blocking the 3D overlay and we have a displacement in time where the Earth may lose mass as the upgrade of mass is pretty much everywhere else apart from the shadowed area upon the Earth. And that's usually the area that will be receiving a significant earthquake event or geophysical disturbance. Now we'll be uploading about 30 videos on this subject matter in 2024 on this channel and that will be regarding the earthquake symmetry into the solar eclipse and that will be country specific looking at all the major earthquakes combined with the solar eclipse and we'll find some very interesting patterns and symmetry. We can even use those for forecasts however I will be using the forecasts only on the website for those who are interested in this subject matter keeping it away from YouTube due to the level of plagiarism and theft of this work and essentially people being gatekeepers of the information and misrepresenting what's being said. So I will be using my website only for people who are keenly interested in this information and have a genuine interest overall. A very interesting phenomenon was reported just prior to this earthquake in 2008, 15 to 30 minutes prior to the event. Earthquake lights was recorded and reported. Now this is due to the piezoelectric effect of the crystals within the crustal layer of the Earth being crushed prior to the earthquake this is the actual rupture itself coming from within the Earth and then eventually resulting as the earthquake itself about 30 to 45 minutes later. This is a very interesting phenomenon and it has been reported with a lot of earthquakes, especially the major earthquakes in Chile and other locations in Japan just prior to their event as well. That concludes this 2008 Magnitude 8 Sichuan earthquake report regarding earthquake itself and the solar eclipse. For more information, please visit solarwatcher.net and quakewatcher.com where there will be more information for members and subscribers as well as website newsletters. Thanks for watching.